Off-grid plumbing on the homestead. This is how we do it. First thing you're gonna need is a water source. Next, you're gonna need a water pump and a distribution system. An accumulator tank is helpful. Hot water heater, a manifold system, and finally, your endpoint. Now we're gonna talk about all these parts in detail and show you how they work. The first thing we're gonna talk about is the water collection, the water source. Um, what we've set up here, we've had these for a couple years now, is two 50, 100 gallon tanks. And they collect water from off of these roofs of storage building and a woodshed and it collects in these things. This is all uphill compared to where it's going down, downhill, slightly downhill to um, the houses. And so the, what, the lines come out of the tank and then they go into the ground. And yes, these lines do freeze. We're technically in the south. And so there are a few days during the winter where temperatures get down far enough where we have to drain the lines. But it's usually not more for them for a couple days and you know a few times a year, a few times per winter. Uh, the tanks are painted black. They come that way, and that helps to keep them above uh, temperature uh, so they don't freeze too often or freeze too hard. I think maybe during that one winter we had where like all of Texas even froze to death, uh, it like froze solid maybe at that point, but uh, they don't usually freeze solid. And so if we have a couple days of temperatures, we're just getting into that warning area of like 27, 25 degrees, we'll go ahead and drain the lines um, and, and everything's good for a few days. And then we open them back up and everything's fine again. Now, if you wanted to, you could bury your lines, bury your tanks. I've seen people do that. If you bury your tank like halfway down or a third of the way down and rain your lines that way, that would be fine. You can do that. It's totally fine to do that. We live here in a place where we didn't have an excavator at the time when we put those tanks in. And it was just going to be a hassle. And there's a lot of rock and clay. It would be hard to dig by hand. So we're fine with the setup the way it is. Now, this is our distribution system and pump. Um, this is a pump that we put in. And basically, the water comes downhill. Okay, the tanks are all uphill from here, slightly. And it comes in here. I have different shutoff valves. I have different spin-down filters. This is a 100 mesh spin-down filter. This 100 mesh spin-down filter uh, filters it, and then it goes into the pump. This is to keep any debris that might harm the pump out of the pump, okay? Uh, your pump can be hurt by debris if, there gets, if debris gets in the water, large debris. And so that, that filters that. And then after the pump, we have a 250 mesh spin down filter. And then after that, a 500 mesh spin down filter. And these can easily be drained by turning the valve here or just, you know, basically draining the system, unscrewing this and then scrubbing out the filter. And you can buy replacement filters if you want to. But so far, we just had to, you know, scrub these out and it, that works fine. Anyway, and then we have a couple other valves here that if I want to hook up hoses or different other, other items to this system, I can. If you turn the valve it turns on. So this is a really pretty powerful pump and you'll run a hose no problem either one of these two spigots. And so it's plugged in here and I had this plugged into our solar system, uh, the AC line that runs down to the house. Other than that, that's about it for that. Let's move on to the accumulator tank. So those of you who live in an RV will notice and understand uh, that when you have a pump, a water pump, sometimes it puts out water in like a spurt in this constant spurting motion and it's really annoying okay and it sounds loud and it's just it's a mess it, it, people it's people don't like it and so the way you fix that is you have an accumulator tank now they make big ones they make small ones this is a pretty small one but it does the job fine we don't experience any of that pumping sensation that comes through our faucets when we have something like this installed uh, it's pretty easy to install it comes pre-pressurized uh, from the factory it has a way where you can check the pressure with this little gauge here like a tire gauge and so you just hook up a tire gauge to see what the pressure is you want to keep it around 30 psi um, and if it's not that you can take a bicycle pump and just kind of top it off a little bit and then hook it up and it works right out of the box no problem now this is the hot water heater i was inspired to do this system setup from deep south homestead uh, they had bought an eco temp for their off-grid cabin and i looked at the reviews online and i really didn't like the reviews of the eco temp Eey. So I went ahead and got the Renai, which had much better reviews. And so um, and so far, it seems pretty easy. It was kind of like just a plug and play system. And that makes it sound easy, but it's really not. Uh, you have to hook up gas lines. You have to hook up the water lines. And I tell, I know, I know I'm going to get lots of comments. Technically, this is not to code. Okay. 
<laughs> um, I'm not. To, you're not supposed to cross lines, and I definitely crossed lines. And this is just a um, uh, uh, what do you call that? Um, when it gets too much pressure and it blows, I forgot what that's called. But it's a valve that basically, if too much pressure accumulates in the system, this can blow and just blow out of that way. So it's not really a line that's active. It's only active if something bad happened. But um, I have the in for the cold water here. I have the out for the hot water here. And it goes up and into the house. And this one is the cold that also goes up into the house. So it comes out of the accumulator tank, goes up into the house for the cold, and then over to the water tank here, and then out for the hot. And then from the hot and from the cold, these two lines go into the manifold system. Okay, um, this is a pretty easy setup. Uh, yes, it's not to code. Uh, the, I, you know, I'm not a gas expert. I consulted a gas expert before I hooked it all up and he told me what to do. He, he told me what I needed and that everything would be fine. And so everything seems to run fine. I have no complaints. Uh, it's probably not to code the way it would be in the city if you lived in a place in a, muni a municipality where they had all kinds of ordinances and zoning and regulations and stuff like that. But um, it works for us and we'll, we'll go with it until it doesn't. Now, most homes, when you have it hot and cold coming in, they usually come in and they are distributed by a trunk line. And uh, some of you may be familiar with that. Others, they opt for a manifold system. So this is, we decided to go with a manifold system. This is a manifold that's created by a company called Viega and they make all different sizes. I think this is one of their smallest sizes they make. We don't have a whole lot of need. We have some extra room for different lines if we need them down the road. Um, but this is, plenty for what we need here in on the homestead and so we have a hot line that comes in and a cold line that comes in and we have four hot lines that go out and four uh you know was it six cold lines that come out and it comes with a little key and you turn the key for whatever line is active and then you turn the key for whatever line is not active and so you can turn them off and on uh, pretty simple uh setup there and so this comes in the house and hot side cold side and it works uh, pretty well so check it out, Viega, if you're interested. Uh, that's a system. It's really pretty easy to set up, plug and play type stuff. And uh, just take regular PEX lines, and the PEX lines go into the floor, and then they run throughout the house. And finally, your end point. So we have hot and cold running water, cold and hot running water. So it, it works great. We love it. Easy, simple, and who would have thought that the homestead would have hot and cold running water? <laughs> pressured um, on the homestead so it's amazing we got it we love it and um, we have a, actually we ran the lines to the shower and the bathroom now too and so we have a sink in there um, I can show you the sink real quick look at that we have water in the bathroom and shower too I'll show you the shower but look at that amazing so a number of months ago we decided we wanted to go ahead and put in a water system for the homestead and I noticed that we had that pump if you remember the pump that sat on the side of the um, of the sink and we used that for I don't know, a few years and it worked well. However, it started to leak. And when it started to leak, uh, it was hard to control the leak. Um, we tried to silicone, we tried to do all kinds of things to it, but it just kept leaking and leaking. And eventually it developed a mold problem. And I didn't want that mold problem to, to spread. Okay, and so the way you eliminate mold is eliminate the water source. And so we decided to go ahead and just redo the whole kitchen uh, we did all the bottom cabinets here because some of the cabinets were damaged by mold, especially under the sink here. And so we redid, ripped out all those cabinets, ripped out all of these cabinets here, put on a new countertop. It's the butcher block countertop and then uh, installed the water system along with everything else and a new kitchen sink to go with it, like a farm sink. And that has helped out tremendously. So we redid. Here's the before picture of what it looked like before. And here's a picture of the pump. You can see the pump over there. And then here's what it looks like now. So definite improvement, and now we have hot running water on the homestead. Um, to put, actually, I was kind of surprised how easy it was to go ahead and put a hot water system uh, and a running water system on your homestead. It's not really that difficult. Uh, it can be done pretty easily. Um, I don't know what how hard it's going to be in the future to source some of these materials with all the supply chain things going on right now. But uh, if you if you're living off grid and you want to develop an off grid plumbing system. Those are the things, those are the elements you're gonna to need to be able to create one. It's not that hard, just takes a little bit of work um, of putting it all together and planning, um, but hopefully this video can give you some ideas to get you started. Before we end the video, let me address a couple questions that I know will show up in the comments below if I don't address them now. Number one, the filtering. You saw the spin down filters that I have on the system where the pump is, 
And that is not for filtering for drinking, okay? That's for sediment. It's to keep heavy sediments out of the water system, okay? For filtering, we always continue to use our Berkey. You guys have seen me do videos before on the Berkey. We have the Imperial Berkey. It's the biggest Berkey they make, and we use that heavily for my family. We will always, we, my kids love the Berkey. They love the Berkey water, and so we'll continue to use the Berkey water. Um, number two is the winterization. The system that we have is easy maintenance. It's easy to drain. You see, I have lots of valves everywhere. I have valves at the tanks. I have valves at the houses in many places or throughout the place uh, where, the, where the water comes into the house so that I can always drain the system from almost any point or actually from many points to make sure that water, if I need to drain the system, if I know there's a really heavy freeze coming, I can drain the system completely and maintain the system and keep it safe from freezing. So that's a big thing, putting put in lots of valves, lots of outlets so that you can drain the system. Um, and I, other than that, I think that's about it. Those are the two things that came to mind that I knew I would get questions on when it comes to filtering for drinking and then also for maintenance. Um, if you have other questions about the system below, leave a comment below and I'll try to address it or maybe someone else can chime in with their ideas if I don't get to the video. Um, but I'll try to uh, answer questions to the best of my ability. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to hit the like button before you go and be sure to check out our merchandise, Stupid Should Hurt, because if there was less stupid, the only way you get less stupid in the world is to introduce more hurt. <laughs> so uh, it's our best selling t-shirt of all time, Stupid Should Hurt. Check out our, uh, our shirts over at teespring.com, links in the description below. And make sure you leave a comment. Let us know if you like the video, if you have questions. If you're on grid, off grid, uh, do you, would you ever have an off grid system? Leave a comment, let us know. Maybe you would never do this, but I like the fact that our house, for the most part, operates like a normal house and is still off grid after all these years. All right, guys, see you next time in the homestead. Bye. Hey, guys, I'm happy to introduce an American homestead sponsor, Zervita Zeal. Now, first off, I only accept sponsors from products that I use and believe in. My family uses Zeal mainly because we want to ensure a healthy immune system. You see, it's made up of only whole food concentrates and includes no artificial colors, flavors, or preservatives. The included sweetener is all natural from fruit and the stevia leaf. It's gluten-free, it's vegan, and it's kosher. In 2018, my youngest son was involved in a bike accident that resulted in the surgical removal of his spleen, and that's an important part of his immune system. And because we live on a farm, you can guess that having a healthy immune system for our family is very important. Some of the included ingredients are beetroot, chicory root, turmeric, moringa, blueberries, cranberry, goji berry, milk thistle, ginseng, alfalfa, broccoli, and so much more. It's these natural ingredients that can easily be made into a powerful and tasty drink that my family can make and feel good about. So sign up and give it a try today. Every purchase you make goes to help the homestead so that we can continue to make great homesteading videos for you. Link is in the description below. Go ahead, give it a try. Hey guys, did you know you can become a patron of an American homestead? They get access to private videos and we send them gifts from the homestead that we make here on the homestead. And we also enter our patrons into special giveaways that are only available to them. And before you go, please check out these other great videos. Go ahead, click. Oh wait. <laughs>